Hello everyone, welcome to another video in our helpful tools uh, section here for microcontrollers. I'm going to uh, be talking today about another little tool. Um, we got finished up with our LT Spice uh, stuff and so now we're going to move on to another tool, kind of a more digital tool. <laughs> You'll have to excuse me if I sniff a bunch. I've, I've kind of caught some sort of a cold uh, so I've been getting over that here for the past few days so um, <coughs> been a little bit since I posted a video because of it and lots of other things. But anyway, um, so if I'm sniffing a bunch, you'll have to look over it. Anyway, I want to show you guys Cedar Logic, which this is an open source uh, little uh, logic simulator program that you can get from SourceForge.net. I will uh, include the link in the description uh, for where to download this from but it's actually one of the best ones I think I've seen uh, so far. This one is, is really good. It has um, almost every little logic gate thing that you can think of. It's got flip-flops, it's got registers, it's even got RAM and ROM. It's got, it's got a bunch of really cool stuff as well as your just basic gates and, and things like that. You know. And it even has muxes, demuxes, decoders, encoders, all that cool stuff. Um, but anyway, so I'm just going to kind of show you just some basics, um, <coughs> how to set up your inputs and your outputs. Uh, I don't want to go anything super elaborate. I'd have to actually, you know, design some sort of a system or something to really get going. But what we'll do today is just something fairly simple, just a, a uh, two input AND gate is what we'll do. And I'll just demonstrate some of the little uh, features and tools that this, uh, this software has to it that actually uh, does quite a very good job. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to grab an AND gate, okay? And what I do is I click and hold and drag it on to the deal. Now, when I let off, it's still dotted. You have to uh, click one more time, and that's left clicking. So, to get it out there, you click and hold, drag it over on, let off, click one more time, and it places it on there. So, same thing with deleting. You click on it until it becomes dotted or selected, and then just type the delete key, and it'll go away. Now, I uh, think if you want properties, you can double click, except since it's an AND gate, you don't. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, I can turn it. Uh, if you double click, it's not going to give you anything, but I'll show you other things to set properties and whatnot. You can double click. Um, apparently, if you right click, you can rotate it around. If you ever need to rotate them around, you just right click and it moves them around. Uh, I've never I've never had to, so I kind of haven't messed with it. You can also click and hold and drag and move it around if you need to move it. Um, and then click off of it again and then it'll set it back down. Okay, now we need some input and some output. Um, except first we're going to go to this, this feature called Invert and Connect. If you click on that, um, this is a way of doing, if you're doing off-page markers, and as you can see, it gives you um, up to 10 different pages that you can place components. Well, to be able to go between pages as well as maybe you want to label your inputs and whatnot, you're going to use these two little tools. One that's the F that means from, and the one that says to means to. So um, <coughs> it's basically your your off-page markers, basically. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring us up one of the twos. We'll bring another one on, so that way we have two of them. Okay, and now I'm going to double click, and I'm going to name this one input A. Here, let's do caps A, and this one will be B. Okay. <coughs> Then we need the from to place over here by our logic gate. So here's one of the from. Here's the other from marker. And we'll do the same thing to them. This will be A. <coughs> this will be B. Much like uh, putting off-page markers in schematic capture. I don't know if you guys have ever seen some of my videos. If you've seen my uh, the ones about Eagle CAD and whatnot. Kind of the same thing. It's like naming your nets, you know. So A is the same thing as A here. B is the same thing as B here. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead. We'll connect these up. And to do that, if you put your cursor right at the edge, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little box that pops up. And if you click and hold, you'll draw a line. If you can see this line, and then you draw it to the next little box, and it automatically will connect it. That's like this one. Um, you might think that you have to go over, up, and then over to connect it. It does it all for you. You just click in one box, draw the line to the other one, and it automatically puts the little jog in it. I don't know if you can see that. Let me blow that up. If you can see that. Um, let me delete that and do it again. So, see, I just draw the line, and it looks like it's going to go at an angle, but actually it puts the nice, neat little jog in it, so it looks looks nice. So, anyway, one thing that I do have kind of an issue with is is when you zoom, 
it only zooms relative to the center of the page it doesn't zoom relative to your mouse cursor now I haven't played with any of the options but you might be able to change that I don't I don't know um, I've only used the software twice uh, but when I have used it it's been very very useful but um, what you can do is if you notice down here in the bottom left hand corner of the screen you have kind of like a map overview you can zoom in then if you click and move around you can actually move it move your view around move your big window view around by clicking and dragging this little box this little zoom box around in your kind of like map view window that's down here and that's how you can kind of move move stuff around if you need to um, and then and then it'll zoom relative to wherever the center of that box is so if I center the box uh, if I can get it to work around this gate then it zooms relative to where this is so anyway, I uh, don't know if I really like that feature a whole lot. I'd rather it zoom relative to my mouse. But like I said, there could be, could be uh, under settings, there could be, well, maybe not. I don't know, there could be an option somewhere that changes that. I'm not sure. I think it's just the way it is. But it's okay. No big deal. <coughs> so now I need to add some input and some output to this. So we're going to go to number three, which is input and output. Now, they've got a bunch of different input options. They've got either an on-off toggle switch, which is this first one. They've got a variable rate square wave clock. You can basically designate how fast, what the frequency of it is, but it'll just generate a, a square wave. And then you've also got single pulse generators that will it'll do a just a one-shot pulse. Um, you can ground certain things, basically putting zero on stuff uh, with the ground. You can put VDD or power so if you you want to tie let's say one of these sides to a higher one of these sides to a low permanently and then run your simulations you can do that too that's what that's for you can have a 4-bit hex pad um, then here's some output devices you've got an LED you can have a 4-bit LED display <coughs> a 4-bit LED display with pass-through bus um, so you can you know you can like gang a bunch of them together, or you can have an 8-bit LED display, which is basically the like the seven-segment displays and whatnot. So you can have a lot of different things. What we're going to do is we're just going to for our output we're going to place an LED out here. Okay, same deal. Click on the little box, drag it to the next one, and connect it. Okay. Now we're going to grab a couple of on-off switches, plop a couple of these out here. Okay, and connect those guys up as well. <clears throat> now, one thing that is cool about the software is things are color coded. Since it's black, these lines are black, and this guy's black. If I change it to red, notice how this one changed to red? Let me zoom in. This one changed to red? So it's kind of cool. It's kind of co color coordinated. See, now if I go back to black, it's now back to black. It's kind of neat. And of course, we know with an AND gate, you know, anything other than 1 1 is a 0. But if I give it a 1 and a 1, hey, then it turns on. So that's kind of neat. Now there's another feature that's kind of spiffy about this thing. If you guys notice up here, there's a pause, a step, and there's basically a time bar. You can drag the slider and increase it from 25 milliseconds. All you basically increase the, the frequency of, of, of it simulating. What that's for is a very helpful tool that's the scope, O-scope. So you can bring that up, and it basically acts like a logic analyzer. Um, I'm going to kind of minimize this, put this up here, pull that down a little bit, put the O scope over here. So another thing that would be better is if this could be somehow integrated into the other the other thing. It would be be cooler. But I put them uh, uh, top and top like that. And I don't know why that flickers like that when you're in O scope. I, I don't know why it did that. But anyway. I mean, it's not perfect software, but like I said, it is still very, very useful. Um, very, very useful. So now, if we go over here and we want to watch input A, we choose our inputs from this menu right here. I want to watch input A, and see, of course, right now, our, we're going, and A is low right now, so it's low. If I change A to a high, we'll see it jump up. If I change it back to a low, we'll see it go back down. See? So that's kind of cool. And let's say we want to watch another input. We want to watch B. Okay, watch B. There's B as well. So now B goes up, A goes up, B goes down, A goes down. See? So now you can get, like, if let's say we wanted A to be uh, one of those square waves, let's say. Turn it off. I'm going to select it, delete it. 
course it gives us a blank because it's non-existent anymore because it's undefined all right now I'm going to take it I'm going to put one of these pulse generators on here there we go there's our little pulses so all right so we turn B on now it's gonna it's gonna blink and again like I said you can double click on it you can say if you want half what what you want the half period to be you can change it around make it higher lower whatever you want to do and it'll make make them wider or smaller all that fun stuff it's pretty cool it's pretty cool little software I kinda like it but anyway but that's that's basically it um, and then you know like I said you use register you can use flip flops you can use like we could put a flip flop in here and put like a chain of flip flops in and run a clock and then and then flip some outputs or whatever and roll in different things and you'll see all that through this this oscope that's down here you can actually see it like a logic analyzer and it's it's actually very very useful and like I said if you click the pause symbol you can stop it um, or get it going I can't remember if the yeah the pause does the same thing down here you can say pause and reset and it'll start over again um, you can, I think you somehow export this except I've clicked on that and it doesn't seem to work so I don't know how that works but you can save the scope um, you can click save and it'll save an image of it um, you can do that on some pretty cool stuff with this little software so I'm still experimenting I hope you guys check it out those of you that uh, may do a lot of logic gate stuff that play with logic gates uh, 7400 logic or whatever um, it's a cool little tool uh, by all means please comment if uh, you guys find anything uh, cool with this if anybody decides they want to try it out play with it find some really cool things that it does please let me know um, I will continue to explore with this software and let you guys know if there's any uh, any more really neat features that uh, that this thing comes with that you might be able to use. But all in all, I think it's a very good little software. It's it's quite nice to to play with, and since it's based pretty much all logic based, uh, it 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 kind of cuts out. Whereas, like I said, LT Spice, you could do this with LT Spice. Um, there is AND gates, OR gates, NOR gates, you know, and all that stuff. But the problem is, is that if you want muxes or demuxes or or something specific like that, you you don't you don't have them. Like they even have add and compare. They got adders. Um, they got full adders. They got um, uh, comparators. I think. Yeah, they even have comparators. They got a lot of cool little useful tools that you can use in here. So a lot of stuff that LT Spice you do have to maybe download a model or somehow build it. You know, like if you want a mux or something, you have to build it out of logic gates to get a mux. You know, which just takes more time whereas you can just slap a deal down and to uh, with LT Spice you know you you can do kind of like this this oscope type deal with the scope um, and do that um, uh, LT Spice might be a little better to use than this in circumstances of let's say um, transient stuff if you're dealing with uh, you know you want it to be like when you're dealing with uh, states like if you're doing a uh, state machine uh, design or something like that. You might want to use uh, LT Spice just for your transient, so like like, or for a history. Like you know, you're gonna do this, and then somewhere down the road you'll do something else, and then somewhere down the road you do something else, and then you know see how the whole thing shifts. That might be easier to use than this. However, I believe you can get this to do that too. In in a way, uh, you just have to finagle with it. But anyway, I thought I'd show you guys this because it seems like it's a pretty good little tool to use. Uh, very simple and it's free. You know, we all like free stuff, so it's all open source out there on SourceForge dot uh, net, I believe. And uh, like I said, I'll put the link in the description. But good little tool to use. Hope you guys check it out, play with it. Um, for the future, we got some other stuff upcoming. Um, I think I'm going to do for our next uh, hardware uh, video. I think I'll I'll get a video out on uh, infrared. We'll do some IR stuff. I know that uh, some people uh, have seen. Uh, some of the stuff that Radio Shack has, Radio Shack will have some of those little IR sensors. If anyone's ever seen that, they'll have the infrared LEDs and whatnot. And they have the rec the receiver and the emitter LEDs. And yes, you can make some really cool stuff with that. In fact, I even saw on a web page uh, I saw that someone that made an, uh, an IR controller for their PC, you know, and stuff. So that kind of made me got me to thinking that we ought to I'll do something like that. So I'll show you guys a little IR demo of how to do how to do a little infrared uh, receiver transceiver type thing so that'll be our next project um, for down the road I'm thinking of getting into maybe some other microcontrollers uh, other than PIC uh, maybe we'll I think we'll probably play with uh, maybe the Arduino uh, system I was thinking about buying an Arduino and playing with that and seeing what that looks like so that might be in the future 
because I've had a lot of requests and a lot of questions about Arduino systems. And so I think I may uh, buy one of the Arduinos and play with it uh, and see what it's like. As well as I think there we also might break into ARM, ARM processors, because uh, those are pretty cool. Those are what's in your Androids and your, your all your, your handheld devices and stuff is mostly ARM, uh, the Cortex uh, processors and whatnot. So we may uh, play with that too. I think I may buy uh, one of the dev kits for those and we'll play with those and we'll, I'll show you guys how to mess with those. So it's fun and interesting stuff coming up in the future. Um, also the more you know microchip little solutions as I think of them and as you guys ask me questions about them. So more stuff on the horizon. Take care guys. Keep coding. Have a good time with it. Have fun. We'll talk to you later.